Um, the next item on the agenda then is my report. And um, I just, you know, typically I tell everybody what happened at the last board meeting. And, uh, and, and there were a number of interesting things at the, at the last board meeting. I went and I re-looked at the notes from it. Uh, and the, one of the first items that they showed was about the CPAS program. And have we talked about that here at the track? I don't think we ever did, did we? I don't know. The, we could. Uh, the CPAS program is about, about corporations like the, the hotels down at the beaches where they actually have a special program with PSTA for their employees to get to work. And, uh, and apparently they were the, there were several people speaking about it and, and saying that it's been very well received and, and these people are, are regularly using the bus system. So it's a very good way to be bringing in some riders for a very important, uh, consistent use. Uh, then the other thing that was on the uh, agenda I apologize, I had it all on my notes and now the paper is here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, thank you. There were um, there were two very interesting things. Heather Sobish spoke about the uh, update to the community bus plan and that will that will be presented to us as well, I think, in terms of more more information, right? Or um, So that was just the um the start of it in terms of having the board approve the task work order for our consultants to go out and look at the entire system. And so what you'll start to see is as we get into the technical um, analysis of what's happening on our system, we'll bring that to you and some recommendations for some system changes. So that'll, that's that's what you'll see is the, more of the outcomes and the public engagement side of our community bus plan. The community bus plan will then get fed into the MPO's long-range transportation plan and form the basis of how we apply for grants and get um, federal and state and uh, hopefully additional local funding as well. So. And so that was, and that's been, it's been five years since the last one was done, so it's, you know, the time is really very appropriate. So you'll start to see if you're, um, our, what we're going to be doing a system-wide survey of, of riders, so you'll see um, our surveyed company going out and asking people the origin, destination, use, that kind of survey. Um, we have other customer satisfaction surveys that we'll do later in the year, but in the next few weeks, you'll start to see those folks out and asking people questions. Um, and then the uh, Jacob Lubutka uh, presented information about two grants, which uh, PSA is involved with with engineering firms with for autonomous uh, vehicles. And uh, one he talked about was a demonstration project in St. Petersburg, and the other was a feasibility study in the North County, uh, which again, I think a lot of us are very interested in the whole autonomous vehicle uh, types of op you know options. And then also it, it continues to show how PSTA is very progressive as far as as being at the forefront of, of issues relative to transit. So, so that was very interesting. Um, and those, those were the, I think, the key things. What other things would you like to add about the, about the board meeting or about anything that, I know you, you were not at, um, here at the last time because you were doing some things in Tallahassee. Is there anything to report from Tallahassee? <coughs> well, there's always lots of fun things going on in Tallahassee <laughs> <laughs> at this time of year. Uh, I would just like to introduce myself to, to the new folks that are all members of TRAC. Uh, my name is Brad Miller. I am the CEO of PSPA. I'm very sorry I missed your very first meeting last month for having to be in uh, Tallahassee. But um, I have been the head of PSTA for uh, about six years now. And um, I very, very much enjoy um, hearing from you and talking with you, our writers. Um, here on track. You guys are very, very important to me. Um, as someone who does spend some time myself riding the bus um, and uh, hosting uh, what we call transit town halls around the community where um, we advertise um, that me and my staff will be out um, to hear feedback from customers and people take the bus from Gulfport all the way up to Countryside Mall to come yell at me. Um, <laughs> uh, 
it's something that I'm very, very passionate about and very proud that we have this great track committee. I've done my own, I can't say this is a scientific fact, uh, but I've done my best at using Google. And I do know, I think PSTA has the only writers committee in the state of Florida uh, that reports directly to the board. And uh, that is very, that's also a very important part of track, uh, which uh, you may not know. But Gloria, as your chair, every month presents the uh, recommendations that the writers committee um, votes on at these meetings and um, other, in, other ideas or initiatives that the writers come up with. And we have two board members um, uh, with us. I report to the PSDA board, and the PSDA board is made up of elected officials from around Pinellas County. So we have from the city of Clearwater, Councilman Bill Johnson over there, who previously served as our, uh, our chair a couple years ago, uh, and Josh Shulman. He is a uh, representative of the city of St. Petersburg on our board. And um, I, it's great for, and I know the, the PSA board members uh, love hearing from Gloria or, or the, the track committee because um, it connects to our customers, right? Um, which is a very important thing for all of our initiatives. So I, want, I think the only thing I want to say is that I want to make sure that each of you uh, feel comfortable contacting me. You, I'll give you my cell phone number um, and uh, you can text me. I was uh, talking to some of my staff earlier today. I seem to have, um, I don't know what it ha what's happened, but um, I'm getting a lot more texts recently from uh, writers, usually not with positive things, but um, they, they are very appreciative to, to get, you know, whatever information. They usually send a photo of the bus that they just missed or that <laughs> you know, is really late or whatever. Um, so... Please feel uh, always comfortable talking to me and um, telling me your experiences because uh, I know it makes our system better. Well, thank you very much, and I apologize for not introducing you. I forgot to. Um, okay, the uh, next item on the agenda is the Forward Pinellas Report. Uh, David Colors is our representative on the Citizen Action Committee for uh, Forward Pinellas. Sure, and, and for the folks that are new, I'm Dave Colbar. I'm from Safety Harbor. And I have the privilege of sitting on the Forward Pinellas Board. Forward Pinellas is the Metropolitan Planning Organization. It was revamped, but uh, it's the commu community of all the cities and the county, and they're a more umbrella group that does not only transit, but roads and bike paths and water access and all of the other stuff, the uh, Pinellas Trail, uh, and coordinating both federal and state grants so all that gets together. Uh, their meeting is really strange. I report on it, but it occurs two days from now. So I'll be going to the next meeting the day after tomorrow and then wait 28 days to tell you about it. So the meeting I'm going to tell you about occurred 28 days ago. Uh, and I invite all of you to go. It's down at Court Street in Clearwater uh, on Thursday night following our meeting usually. And uh, it's great stuff. You can also download all this stuff. There's a ton of information that these guys will do. Uh, what we saw last month was a great presentation on the Clearwater Ferry. Uh, you may know there's a ferry that runs from Clearwater out to Clearwater Beach to try and get people off of that bridge. And to my surprise, they've got a three-year, five-year, ten-year plan if this thing will take off to not only run a ferry up to Dunedin, but possibly to split it off into a hub up by the, up by the marina and run it down towards uh, Johns Pass. And again, just like I, I took the ferry out in Fort Lauderdale, if any of you have done that, they have a business plan. All we need to do is get users. So if that thing will start generating uh, traffic, it would it will grow. They're talking about taking one boat into two, three, uh, maybe five different routes. I was uh, well, and again, all we need to do is get some uh, some activity. Uh, you may know in the county the Complete Streets program that's up in St. Pete uh, is fantastic. Complete Streets is this new idea uh, of slowing down that you don't measure the success of a road by how many cars run through it but how many people stop and do business is it a good neighborhood are there trees is there a cafe do you feel safe walking with your child down the sidewalk uh, again our, our city streets are not just thoroughfares St. Pete was leading that but uh, Forward Pinellas is funding a project up in Dunedin in Mid County and it's neat to see that it's not just a, a single spot that that hopefully uh, will uh, be a, a groundswell. We'll start seeing them uh, happen all over the place. We were inundated with spreadsheets about 
five year, seven year, 10 year plans and did, did this project go down a year and this project go up a year and did we have funding for this and has this been moved back and this is in the engineering phase. I'm constantly amazed about how, how many projects there are and how there's a central staff. When you consider that Gulfport is doing this and Safety Harbor is doing that and Unincorporated is doing this and Tarpon Springs are gonna do this, but if they're doing this and these guys are doing that, this has to be done first and does it, does it affect a bus and does it affect a, a bike trail? And there's somebody up there that's actually keeping track of all that, and I'd invite you guys to come see it. It is absolutely amazing. Every time I go there, I'm, it's, it's heartwarming. Anyway, the last thing we did is something that's coming, and I printed this for all of you. You can see it on the web. This is not as good. This is a map of all the fatalities in the county for the last year, and we see X's are pedestrians, and diamonds are bicycles, and these are motorcycles, and others are cars. And if you look around in the back and you get a giant magnifying lens you'll actually see by location by date whether it was one people or two people and what's neat about this isn't how many people were killed in the county on, on the roads but that somebody's looking at it and that's what really impressed me and and that we get one of these every month just like we get reports on ridership over at forward pinellas we're getting this because the state is pushing the counties to measure this and like complete streets any new projects that are coming down the pike someone is supposed to include in that safety because florida is saying pedestrian safety rider safety bike safety is just out of control if you're going to put in a new curb at this certain corner how does that affect safety if you're going to change the street light on this corner how does that affect safety you've got to at least dot that i and so this map and this this uh, table represents that um, I was real interested in this data because I expected it to be concentrated, that there was going to be a bunch over here and a bunch over there and a bunch on the beach. But what really amazed me is that it's pretty even spread that people are getting killed all over the place in kind of a random order. If you were just to throw BBs at a map, it sort of looks that way, which is sort of bad. That means you sort of have to do the work everywhere. There wasn't, there wasn't like one place you could throw a million dollars at and you know, save half the lives. So it means there's a lot of work to do. But the policy then is with this, uh, with safety, is every time you do something, you know, you're going to add that little piece to it. And so, again, I invite you guys to come to Forward Pinellas. It's in two days, and we meet every month, and it's a, a situation just like this. They have a board that meets just like our board, and then they have a citizens group that meets just like track. And that's all I have to tell you. If anytime you've got my email uh, from this, I'd be glad to talk with you. Give me a call and take your coffee. I'm retired. I love telling people stuff. Well, just like you, I love transit and I love uh, planning bike path citizens. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, the, uh, the review of the minutes from the last meeting. Have all of you had a chance to read the minutes? Do you have any corrections, changes? If not, then I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Motion. Okay. I'll second. Um, and those in favor of approving? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Carries. Thank you very much. First information item on our agenda will be Cindy Raskin Schmidt is going to present to us information on the spring break service promotion. Good afternoon. I am Cindy Raskin Schmidt. I am the Director of Communications and Marketing here at PSTA. I have a team of graphic designers, we have video people, we have public relations folks, we have social media people, we have partnership um, managers and all kinds of fabulousness and our main responsibility is to tell the world about what PSTA is doing. So if it's a particular service or it's a promotion, that's what we do. We do our very best to make sure that you all have the information as riders that you need and that we introduce public transit to other people as well. So um, this spring break that you all heard a little bit about earlier, we had an event this morning where the mayor of Clearwater officially opened the beach for spring break. 
And here's just a picture of the roundabout. Everyone's familiar with this. And we know that during the spring break season, we get a ton of people coming here because who wouldn't want to go to the number one beach in America and hang out for spring break? But we know that it causes a lot of traffic. So last year we partnered with the city and this year we're doing it again with some refinement. And I just want to tell you a little bit about what the services are that we're going to be offering. So it's a partnership. It's not just PSTA in a vacuum. We're working together with Jolly Trolley, the City of Clearwater, the Clearwater <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, and the Clearwater Beach Chamber of Commerce to make this program something that really is a community partnership. We're all working together with the same goal in mind, which is to make it easier to get to and from the beach. This is a park-free, ride-free. So if you have your car, you can drive it and park it at City Hall for free. There's meters there right now, but they're turned off. So there's no meters at City Hall or you can park in the lower lot of uh, Harbor View Center. So when you go down Cleveland, it kind of goes down the hill towards the water, and there's a great big parking lot there at Coachman. You can park there for free. Now, at either of these two locations, you can hop on a Jolly Trolley or a PSTA Suncoast Beach Trolley, or sometimes you might see a bus in there if we need the extra capacity. And you can hop on, and when you get on that bus, the driver is going to hand you a free day pass. So we want to make sure it's easy to get to the beach and also easy to get back from the beach. So we'll give you that day pass right off the bat so you can stick it in your pocket. When you're ready to come home, you have your pass. Um, the Clearwater Beach Transit Center is open. Has anyone, did anyone go to the beach this weekend? Anyone? Dave, okay, so when you go out, when you go out over the bridge, right before the roundabout on the right-hand side, there's a new pull-off there. We can pull the buses right off and there's a beautiful platform um, right now, I believe they're working on putting some benches out for spring break, but after the spring break season, we'll be adding a nice canopy with lots of information. It's going to be really beautiful. And eventually when we have services that come from the airport over to the beach, that's where people will get dropped off and be able to make their way to their hotels from there. So that center is open for this service. The promotion started yesterday and it's running through the end of April. Now that's a really long time. We know that our kids only get one week, um, but we have colleges all around our own state. We have Pasco, Pinellas, Hillsboro. This is the best beach, so this is where everyone's coming. So what we did was look at the kind of college spring break season and make sure we encompassed all of that, make sure we got everybody that we possibly could within this promotion. It's 10 weeks altogether that we're offering this promotion. Um, so the service will be, as I said, a combination of Jolly Trolley and Suncoast Beach Trolley vehicles. That's allowing us to provide service about every 15 minutes. So, Go up, stand at the bus stop, and a trolley will come and pick you up and take you to the beach. On the way back, you see this little map here? On the way back, you'll board, well, anywhere. You all are seasoned transit riders, um, but for new people that aren't used to this service, we've made it really easy. They just cross over into the marina, and they can hop on one of the trolleys. They'll take them right back to their car. So we're doing a lot of promotion. This morning, we had the event, as I said, where the mayor opened the beach for spring break. It was well, very well attended. You'll probably see it on the news tonight. We had eight, 10, and Bay News 9 there, so please check it out. Um, we did a digital ad last week at Mardi Gras. We have a weekly giveaway partnership we're gonna be working on. It's gonna be launching within the next couple of weeks where we're partnering with uh, restaurants out on the beach <coughs> to give away gift cards. So it'll be a social media promotion where you can go on to our social media, share our posts so that all your friends can see about the promotion, and it enters you to win a gift card. And we're going to give away one each week. Uh, we're also boosting our posts on social media, which means we pay a little bit to have those ads delivered to more people than just the people who currently follow us. Um, ongoing earned media. So earned media is where the news station writes a story about you or the newspaper writes a story about you. It's not promotion that you've paid for, you've earned it. We'll keep working on that throughout the whole 10 week period. And we're working on trying to put together a food truck rally with the city of Clearwater, hopefully the week that Pinellas kids are on spring break. So stay tuned for more information about that. We'll definitely invite you all if we're able to get that put together. Um, and then we're gonna um, augment some of our in-house staff. In-house staff will go out, we'll have some additional staff going out and handing out flyers everywhere. Over on the table, uh, Marianne has put out some flyers. If you would like to take one or take a handful, feel free, hand them out to anybody you can. That's telling people about the service promotion. It has a phone number on there, it has maps, all kinds of great information on there. And we're going to be putting those at hotels that are not on the beach because we want to catch people before they get to the beach. Uh, we're going to just paper the world with these things. Any place that will let us stick it on their bulletin board, we're going to put it out there. 
And then we have a really great signage plan. Um, this sign that you see here is an information sign. It has all of the same information that's on the palm card, um, including pictures of the vehicles. So if anybody's not sure what, which vehicle should I get on, we've got some photos up there. Those will be at the stops. We also, earlier on in the presentation, there was a blue sign with an arrow that said park and ride. So in downtown, as you approach these lots, these are guard signs pointing people to the parking lots. Um, and then we're also working on some fun pedestrian ways, wayfinding where we have these cute little flip flops that we're gonna be spray painting with permission from the city on the sidewalk. So I encourage you to go out to Clearwater Beach Transit Center and look for those flip flops and um, tell me what you think about them. That is the information I have for about our promotion and I'd be happy if you have any questions to answer those for you at this time. <coughs> Questions? Yes. Any sort of ID required for people who are age limits or anything? Nope. You just need to be accompanied. Or you just have to get on at City Hall or at Harborview. Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Wait, go ahead. Oh. John. Go ahead. Where do you get on to go back? Well, you can get on at any of the stops. All of these services will go back by the two lots on the way back. But for new folks that aren't used to riding the system or reading the maps, we encourage you to go to the stop at the marina. It's called the I always forget the name. The Hubble, Hubble Harbor Barber. Harbor Barber. There's a stop in front of Harbor Barber that will, if you get on there, you will always get back to your car. And that's on Coronado or Causeway. Um, it's on the south side of the Causeway. So if you go back into, okay. um, if you go back into the marina there behind the um, sailing docks, you know, if yeah. you go right back in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll have those flip flops that you can follow the flip flops okay. to get back to your bus. If you're giving us a, a day pass, at that point I can take the golf trolley to the Don Cesar. You sure could. And then all the way back, jump the other trolley and come up. Yep, right? absolutely. Okay. Yep. So it can, it can be used mm -hmm. for anything. Then. Yeah, it's just a regular day pass. So that was the easiest way. We wanted to make sure that yeah. people could get back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And that's the best way to do that. Sure. Yes, ma'am. My question was, I mean, I think, thank you. I think it's a lovely promotion. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, my, my question is, sort of what ha, what are the objectives who are you trying to capture with this are these just the touristy people are these the students that are in town or does this do you see this as having any sort of carryover for you know people will now learn to ride the bus system or you know positive image for the the community yes all of that all of the above all of that last year we found that a lot of people use this service spontaneously and the way we know that is the first couple of weeks of the promotion our signage out there was not as good as it could have been. Once we boosted the signage and had the park and ride arrow signs, we found tons of people using it spontaneously. So I have the kids in the car, I'm driving to the beach, holy cow, look at this traffic. Oh look, there's a free park and ride. <laughs> Pull in, get out of the car, ride the trolley. That was a ton of the ridership. So we think that's still gonna happen, which is why we have that really robust sign program but also we're reaching further. So that's why we're doing the partnerships like social media, boosting social media, trying to get the news to keep talking about it. A food truck rally will earn us some more media later on to keep people talking about it. So that, that's the plan, kind of encompassing everything that you just said. I think we're, we're also trying to build on the things that we learned last year and every year make this better and so that it becomes part of the spring break experience especially for local people so people who are going over there for the day whether they're they're from Pinellas County or Hillsborough County you know and they and they want to come over to the beach you know patronize our beach businesses we want to be able to make it a great experience for them and I, we have all heard stories about how the locals don't go when it's spring break because there's too many people out there. Well, let's change that and let's create a really nice way for them to get over. And then, and so people who who knew about it last year will see it again this year, and hopefully every year we'll we'll gain more and more community knowledge of, of the services that we provide. And then one other question: where where the parking is? Is that also near where the uh, the ferry goes. Yes. Because the Harbor View. That was what we mm -hmm. I know that I've found that I love is, is parking there and then taking the ferry. It was just delightful. Yeah, so uh, if you look at the map, this is the this is the palm card, the front <laughs> and the back of the palm card that's over here. On our map, let me find the right little button here. We have a little 
you can't see it because it's small up here, but the little Clearwater Ferry logo to show where that boards on both sides. And on the back side, we included other ways to get around. So we have the ferry, Uber, Florida Free Rides, which offers free rides out on the island, and then United Taxi, recognizing that take the trolley over, take the ferry back, or take the ferry over, take the trolley back, or pick one, and maybe you stay out too late and miss the last bus, but you can still get back to your car. So that's why we wanted to make sure we kind of gave all the information we could think of. There's no that. discount on the ferry, though. There's not. It's four dollars each way okay. per person so, for the ferry. But if you get a free ride over on the bus, then you can. Then it's just four bucks on the way back, and that's part of it. That's part of the experience too. If you haven't ridden the ferry, it's fun. It's a nice little boat ride. Yes, sir. Is there uh, any marketing being done with the uh, with Pinellas County Schools? Yeah, that there. Pinellas County Schools is tricky to get into. They have this thing called peach jar flyers. Mm -hmm. um, and some people read them and some people don't. It's kind of tricky. Um, one thing we are looking at doing is trying to get to the schools through the PTAs. So each county has a council of PTAs. So in Pinellas <coughs> County, all of the individual school PTAs are also part of the Pinellas County Council. So we're looking at ways of how we can distribute this information through the PTA rather than through the school. So we still get the same families, it's just a little bit different method. So we're working on working on trying to do that here and in Hillsborough. We're going to reach out to Hillsborough PTA as well. When, when reaching out to uh, the tourists, is, are we able to catch them at the airport? Or uh, I'm, I'm not certain how that would the logistics of it. I'm thinking that when I've gone to places like Disney World or California, there's a sign on the freeway that just says East Parking Lot Full, proceed to West Parking Lot or something like that. Or I, I'm there thinking along with the lawn mm -hmm. signs, there was something of that blinking sign that was so immediate, mm -hmm. like. You know, in the morning the sign's not lit, in the afternoon it is, so. They have these signs called variable message signs, and those are the ones that you see that are fixed across the road, yeah, where it'll tell you Amber Alert and things like yes, that. that one. So some of those, we have been able to get the city of Clearwater to help us get on those, and then the city has their own freestanding ones that they've got on the approaches. I saw one this morning as I was driving down there. I was coming up Drew Street and saw it. Okay. So there are some of those. Getting into the airport itself, I'm sure they'd be super happy for us to pay to advertise in the airport. Yeah. But those kind of opportunities are things we're always looking at. How can we do that and how can we partner? So definitely still talking to them to find out the opportunities there. Yes. Great. Any other questions? About other questions? Great. And now Cindy's going to tell us about the Flamingo Fair. I am. Hello. I'm Cindy Raskin Schmidt, director of <laughs> So has everyone heard of Flamingo? Is there anybody who has not heard of Flamingo? Because I can go through what it is if there's anybody that doesn't know what it is. Okay, so our regional fair collection system, we've been working on it, testing it. We have a little app out there that you can use now as a flash pass, where we are getting ready to roll into the space where we are looking for riders to test the next phase of that system. And what that will mean is getting a smart card, which is the card that has a chip embedded in it that's attached to an account, or the app, the full robust app that'll have a barcode. It works like Starbucks, kind of. You have Starbucks app, right? So you can earn all your stars. Um, so this next phase of testing, we're looking for riders who are regular riders to help us test the program. And we would love it if you all would help us be testers. So on this flyer, there's a website, psd.net slash Flamingo Testers. Um, and I would ask you if you could please, if you're interested in helping with this, go out and register. After you register, please email Marianne and let her know that you've registered. Um, you all going through this process is going to actually help us test the registration process too. Um, so that's super helpful and we just want to make sure that your name shows up on the other end um, with the, the uh, the vendor who's doing this service with us. So basically what they'll do is they'll issue either a card or an app. There's a card, Cassandra has a sample of the card there. It's cute. It's awesome. Uh -huh. And um, they'll, they'll have you load a product on it and test it. Has everyone seen the readers on the buses, the little mm -hmm. squares? Mm -hmm. So those are starting to be activated. We've been testing them with employees and now we're ready to move to the next place. So you're gonna start seeing these flyers go on the buses in the next two weeks. And then they're looking to have people test starting in April. Um, hopefully, all the testing is fabulous and amazing and nobody has any questions or problems and it's going to happen. But this is an opportunity for you to help us see how it works. Now, the places where you run into to bumps and you're like, I couldn't figure this out, that's really helpful for us as we're developing the marketing materials. 
which will be the training materials that help the rest of your fellow riders use the system. So any feedback, any comment, any thoughts, any anything is welcome and appreciated. No. Yes, ma'am. I, I keep thinking of Flamingo as being something that you use if you're going back and forth to Hillsborough County as well, so that it's both counties. But is it something that we would just use in Pinellas? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the other question is, when I went on Flamingo, it, the, the smallest amount I can get is a three-day pass. Mm -hmm. I can't do a one-day pass on it? Well, so that Flamingo that you're using right now was kind of a pilot test app. And originally it was going to be available for a few months, and then they were going to turn it off until we were ready for this big, huge project to roll out. But we told them, you can't give people this amazing technology and then take it away and say, just kidding, see you in, in a year. <laughs> so we had them continue it. So we have added a few products on there. For this test phase, I'm not sure exactly. They probably are going to have it portioned where they'll ask you, please buy day passes or please buy a 31 so they can test the backside of all of that. I'm not 100% sure, but when you register, um, in it is the name of the company who is handling this project, they will be giving you instructions. So eventually, what you'll be able to do is load dollars, you'll be able to put 20 bucks on there and go and ride, and the more you ride, you'll earn passes as you go. So you'll get on the first bus, and it'll charge you $2. You get on the second bus, it's gonna charge you $2. You've paid for a day pass for the day, it's not gonna charge you anymore the next time you get on, and it'll kind of build, like earning a pass as you go. So that's the, that's the way it's going to work in the future. This testing part is kind of, let's see if that works and make sure all the controls work and make sure all the systems work and all the money is being divvied up the correct way because if you tap it here, we get paid. If you tap it over in Hillsboro, they get paid. And we are hoping to get to a place where you buy a pass here and it's good here or Hillsboro all the time. So a day pass is a day pass is a day pass. That's it. One day pass, one price, one fare, one region, one payment system is the goal. Super easy. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Is it on the Google? Can you get it from Google, or do you have to download it on the on the website? Um, for right now, it's not available. Okay. You'll need to register as a tester, and they will help you manage that from that okay. side. Right. When we're ready to roll it out to the full public, you'll be able to do it through Google Play or iPhone. Okay. But right, but right now, if we register, would we would be then able to do this? tomorrow or the next day or no later. what you're doing is is applying if I can use that term applying to be a tester okay. and they're going to be collecting people that are interested in testing and choosing 200 people from PSTA and 200 people from heart who want to participate as testers but we wanted to reach out to you all to make sure you get in the mix and that's why it's also double super important that you let Marianne know that you registered so we can make sure you get in the list what is the deadline for them to I would say if you can if you can there's really not a deadline. I mean, we'll have these out. We'll be collecting through probably the end of March. But, I mean, you can go home and do it today. If you can do it within the next couple of weeks, then we can, you know, make sure you're at the top of the list. Right. So the we middle will of the list. make sure that if you are on this committee, yeah. you will be a tester. Everyone else is applying for one of those 200 spots. You you are mm -hmm. definitely in if you are on this committee. Right. Right. But we need to... But you Check need to register, mm -hmm. you need to follow the instructions to register, and you need to tell Marianne so that we can so we can make sure that that happens. Well, and that helps us too, so when you go and register, if it doesn't work, you can call us and say, hey, this was weird, or it didn't work, or I got some weird error, and that's helping us test this application process too. So that's why we're asking you to, instead of just telling Marianne you want to do it. Will this also work for DART? It will not work for DART right now. That's something I'm not sure if that's in the plans for the future or not, but I can find that out for you. For now, it's just bus, okay. bus and trolley. Because they, we are only outfitting our our vehicles with the readers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Do you think it'll ever get to the point, like, you know how at the beginning of the meeting they pass out a free bus pass to us, mm -hmm. where they could just say, okay, and your free bus pass is being sent to your app. Can it, so it can Absolutely. eventually work that way. Absolutely. Perfect. That's your plan. Mm -hmm. We will get you there for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Would that be cool? Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. All of a sudden, your free app just passes up on your phone. It's yeah. very cool, unless your phone dies. Then you're just stuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to use your iPad to check it. That's, that's a problem. So maybe we need to talk yeah. about the charging amenities. Char okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Starbucks yeah. card in my wallet, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> well, kind of the way it works, your app, you, won't, you can either use a smart card or you can use the app. You could get an actual smart card and 
put it on your app just like you do Starbucks and it would work. So you could do that as a backup. Can you punch a hole in it? Um, I do. I wouldn't. It's like a credit card. Um, it's, got a chip. To it. it's got a chip oh, in the card, but it's embedded. I don't know where in the card the chip is. You can't see it. It's like in the layer of the last thing. Any other questions? And just to, just as a uh, uh, forecast, you know, this is the um, this is the future plan. So someday, not not for a good long while, but PSDA will, and the, and the entire region will be getting rid of the paper mag stripe um, cards. And every single, I mean, the, the way you will ride the bus is with the, one of these plastic cards um, or, or the app pass. You probably, if you've ridden the bus recently, um, you may have seen these flamingo, like these targets um, that are right in the front of the bus. And those, that's what you're gonna be testing. I mean, I, I I was one of the early testers myself, and uh, it didn't work all the time, but it it did work sometimes. I was so excited <laughs> I, um, when it did work. But um, yeah, you just you know you wave your phone in front of it, and it beeps, or you take the card and make it beep, and then that shows that you paid. Yeah. Since you're saying we're moving away from the mag stripe and the, the, the fare box. For a regular daily rider who may be just riding once because they're a visitor and they don't know about flamingo fares or you're visiting in town, do you think we'll ever get to a point where you can use like your Apple Pay to pay for yes. like the two twenty five to like yes. just PSTA for a one trip? Set up that capability. Not everyone in the region has accepted that capability, but that was one of the things that we pushed for. So it's coming. So it will be available. Because I think that would be not awesome maybe for in, not immediately, but it will be available so that okay. you could just be randomly on the beach and I need to, you know, get on the bus. Right. Yep, Apple Pay. Yeah. Not, have, not yeah. have to be pushed. Right, so the, the, but the idea of having the cards or the app is that by that way, as Cindy mentioned, you'll get the best overall fare. So right. if you are a regular rider, we're going to start capping how much you, you spend in a, in a day or in a month so that you end up earning the best fare along the way. I mean, it sounds like what you're describing is that I know sometimes I have to decide: Am I going to get a day pass, or, you know, or or is it? Am I just going right. to do one ride today? Then I, you're saying I don't have to decide that. Basically, it will decide for me that oh, okay, you ended up going over that hurdle. Right. Or people who buy like I buy a day pass because I can only afford a day pass, or I can only buy seven day because I can only afford a seven day. Now you load your card and you will get the best fare every single. Time. You're buying it on the fly. If, if, if uh, I buy a seven-day pass now, oh, and I got called out of town after three days, here as I'm using it, I end up with my three-day pass, and when I leave, it's, yeah. I ended up with a three-day pass. Yeah, I end up buying it on the fly, which is great. That yeah. is yeah, that, that is, is so perfect. That well, and you'll never pay more than the cost of a day pass in a day, and you'll never pay more than the cost of a monthly pass in a month. Exactly. Yeah. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you all so much. I look forward to hearing what you think about the program, and um, it's going to be really fabulous. So thank you. Okay, and everyone try to sign up, right? Okay, the next item on our agenda is our initiatives. And um, please, you know, tell, interrupt me if you, if, if you see it going any other way than, than what I'm saying here. But, but uh, what happened was, as you recall, at the last meeting, we talked about the initiatives from last year and ideas for initiatives for this coming year. And again, the initiatives are the voice that we have as riders, where we have some, some issues that we feel that as riders, it would be good for our board to know it, for our communities to know it. And last year, uh, as we said, the two initiatives were about safety, safety for the riders and the other being regionalism, our, our commitment to wanting regional transit for ourselves. Um, what we talked about at the last meeting is the idea of there are some issues which can be handled internally in, in us approaching PSTA. PSTA can take care of those issues and either giving us information or making corrections and so on. The other part are the areas where we feel that uh, it, where other entities need to be involved, where uh, 
the communities. We need to be able to speak with the communities in which we are, where there are other uh, agencies, uh, transit or uh, like FDOT and so on. And so um, when Mary Ann got the notes that she got back from all of us, um, she really broke it down into a couple of different areas. And what, as we've talked about the ideas that came in, uh, we really wanted to say, do we want to revisit a couple of issues on regionalism, a couple of issues on safety? Um, and then what are the new initiatives we want to look at? And then what are just the internal issues that we want to approach uh, PSTA regarding? Uh, what what we talked about is is there are some ways that we can and, and like I know when I talk with like Cassandra she's excellent with giving me the guidance on well these are some things that the track could do if they wanted to achieve this and uh, and so I think in talking with Mary and and, and Cassandra we've, we've identified what are some of the things we can do with regionalism what are some of the things we can do with safety um, I guess what I'm not exactly sure, do we need to have committees to talk about regionalism and, and safety? I'm thinking that the real issue is, is getting some committees to talk about two, initi two additional initiatives if we choose to have those beyond uh, these old initiatives and maybe approach each of these old initiatives with just a couple of steps that can happen. Would you agree with that, Cassandra, or, or how, how do you see it as being more effective for us to do this? Um, well, I think today that the the group should discuss how you want to continue, if you do want to continue, um, your initiatives of regionalism and safety, and so how that plays out over the course of the year, and then what are other some other things that you might want to discuss in depth, and then we can put together some working groups for you to discuss it with staff, and then we can help guide you as to what what kind of things that you could take on, what kinds of things would be things that you would ask staff to do, and what kinds of things you would maybe ask some external. I think last time the the initiatives were very much externally focused, mm -hmm. and they so they don't have to be like the same as they were last time around. Um, but you may want to have some focus on continuing these issues. So, um, an example of the safety initiative. So that that was a great discussion that we had in the working group last year. It resulted in letters to several um, implementing agencies across the region. And in speaking with the MPO, or sorry, excuse me, Forward Pinellas, who is both the Metropolitan Planning Organization and has some land use jurisdiction, is um, we think that this this group as part of your initiatives to advance the issue of safety is to continue to look for areas where you are having problems across the entire system either accessing accessing bus stops um, or, or other pedestrian issues we would then transmit so you would give those to PSTA staff PSTA staff would then transmit those to um, forward Pinellas to address and that they could more adequately address those external issues to PSTA and so that could be a continual conversation of you find something you send it to Marianne Marianne logs it and then we follow up on it with the MPO so that may be something that you all agree to do as part of your initiatives I don't know if that takes that one doesn't necessarily take a working group it just takes everybody's effort to contribute to the database um, and then in terms of regionalism what do you want to know next mm -hmm. about regionalism and how do you want to participate in the regional conversation um, I think that could be another discussion um, and then these these other ones that other could be other discussions they say well how can we as riders help PSTA increase ridership how is how can we as riders help you to expand your C pass and U pass programs. You know, mm -hmm. so we can have those more in depth conversations if you if if those are the things that you want to tackle. But I would suggest that you pick two because mm -hmm. any more than that and you and you dilute your energy to actually accomplishing something. Here's a question. Um, 
here's what I'm thinking based on what Cassandra said, but I want to hear, hear your input on this. You know, on regionalism, I think at this point we've, we've said, we've, we've made some very good statements to the, the agencies that, that need to hear our voice. And I know from my standpoint, I think what we would like to do is just make sure that we are consistently getting the, it, the latest updates on what's happening from a regional standpoint. Um, and so rather than us saying more, I think maybe it's for just asking for having, making sure that we have a system where we get that, that input. As far as the safety is concerned, I like what you just talked about is that us giving the information to Marianne who can then pass that on to Forward Pinellas or whoever can continue to focus on that. I think it may involve us regularly asking our group if you're encountering areas where you see that it's unsafe for pedestrian, for access for individuals getting to or from a bus stop, as, as members of the track, can we ask for some attention to be given to this? Um, and so again, that, that, to me that doesn't, again, involve another group. I'd like to hear your input. What do you, do you agree with what I'm saying, with the variant of what I just heard Cassandra say? Your thoughts? <clears throat> yeah. I had good luck with the city of Pinellas Park. There were a couple of people that understood and were appreciative of my efforts to clean up the sidewalk, to, to get the, the ditch filled in with cement so that ankles and wheels don't get stuck in there. Um, so just finding somebody you can relate to, mm -hmm. then then things, things started moving. Mm -hmm. So I making that contact so there's, there's two parts to this one is let's fix what's out there right and that's exactly what you did and we can help you find somebody in in the area that you are in if you want to make a contact with a local jurisdiction the other part of this and this is where I think forward Pinellas comes in is we do need to know about what is what is being built out there that's that are issues so that when we, as we rebuild, as we redevelop, that the land development codes and the, and the regulations prevent those things from happening so you don't have to go back out and fix them. So that's where I think the, the role of Forward Pinellas really comes in into how do we fix this from a systemic point of view and the cities are really taking care of the, the what's out there today issues. But it's a forum to discuss both. You know, Elizabeth brought up something too that, that reminded me what we had talked about is maybe we have some kind of an award that, that or you know, just an automatic, like a, like a, like a good doobie sticker, <laughs> but basically something that is sent from the track of PSTA that says thank you very much for making access safer for transit riders. Yes. Um, do you, yeah, do you, what do you think of that? I like it because it motivates me to call up some more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I'm bugging them. And, and, and we're also, what we're doing is we're then acknowledging when it's been done right. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and, I do that and too. It's a positive story rather than just a complaining story. Well, we could do, we could absolutely do that. If you see something good, I think you brought up the um, Woodland Square. Woodlands mm -hmm. Shopping Center as an example. Mm -hmm. If you find, if you want over the course of the year to nominate good design, and then at the end of the year, we can show you all of your nominations over again, and you all can vote on who you'd like to give the Track Safety Award of the Year to. We could, we could do that. It'd be a great news story. Um, and then, I mean, as well as take care of uh, the issues out there. By the way, that's the perfect thing for a press release and to give them some positive feedback. Oh my goodness, which only heightens our. I completely agree with what you've said. On these two issues, the safety and the regionalism, what we did last year seemed to put a ribbon around it. The thought of revisiting them for us, I, I was at a loss in what to do this year. You, you kind of emptied my magazine. Those were both of what I was looking to do. So to just ask for more feedback and to keep on it, they seem like multiple year projects on the other side. So I completely agree. And, and for just coming up with that, that is a great idea. Yeah. Everybody wants an Adam <laughs> Yeah, well, and what I recall is, I know at the uh, NPO and other places, the discussions of, well, you know, you have a bus stop, and then 
the shopping center has an enormous pricker bush uh, edge that <laughs> oh, you cannot yeah. get through or, without or, the, or it's a half a mile down or it's a half mile down and you have to go in the traffic because right. that's the only yeah. accessible uh, way to get off the curb um, mm -hmm. is only at the driveway given something to D. Bartolo and letting him take a picture with us and cut the ribbon and something like that huh. yeah. to highlight the yeah. few and far between good cases where <laughs> they, there's not a bush there um, yeah, well, that'd be great. based on what we're saying I mean I think maybe for the next meeting I, and I, I could talk with Marianne if any of you want to send in any of your thoughts maybe we can actually come together with, with what our what our official procedure will be relative to an award right mm -hmm. okay all right so that that will be what I, we'll do as far as safety do you all agree I, about the I can say I don't feel like we need to wait for once a year. I mean, this seems like I'm something. thinking the same thing. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like any time we see one, we should bring it here yeah. and, and do it. It only, yeah, yeah. How are you going to say that? that seems like a wonderful thing to do. Great policy. Every but again, year. I think it's also a good media opportunity to, to say, look at what PSTA is doing. Look at what PSTA riders are doing. Um, we exist. We thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, and as far as regionalism, do you all agree about the idea of, of we just want to keep getting more information about what's happening from a regional standpoint? Any thoughts? And, and so we wouldn't be focused, like we wouldn't have another subcommittee meeting on regionalism? Yes, right. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that said, um, there were there were two ideas that, that we really came up with that, that we feel have some opportunities for internal and external focus. I think they're really both. And um, we talked about the idea of we as riders, what do what thoughts do we have in terms of increasing ridership, transit ridership, PSTA ridership. And then the other one we talked about, and, and I, I heard a lot of you say, yeah, I agree with that, is the idea of the image of riders. Um, and I would almost say that to me would come first because I think that a lot of us have heard the story of, you know, when you ask other people, why don't you ride? And they say, oh, you ride transit? You know, it's like the people that ride transit, and we, we all look like normal people, and we look like them. And, and I think the image of riders is something that I think we can talk about, that riders can be people that are going to work, and it's, and I ride because of this, or I ride because of that. And, and there are very good reasons why people ride. Um, and then that, to me, seems like a good way as a piece for ideas for how to increase ridership is in improving the image of riders. Um, that's my view. What are your, your views on these two ideas or if you have any other ideas? Come on. What are some of the, what are some things you want to say as a rider? Yes. I know that Jose is out there and I, I've met him on the bus with a group of people and he's teaching them how to ride the bus. I'm okay. pretty sure it's Jose. Juan. Juan. Juan, thank Juan. you. I knew it wasn't Juan. Juan. Um, and more of that. Yeah. I love that he's doing that and I love these people are learning. And, um, and there was a family this Saturday where Park Boulevard, bus 74 is just once an hour. And there was a family Turns out, the bus driver says to me, oh, by the way, do you speak Spanish? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. So this family just uh, arrived from Ecuador three days ago. Haven't, they haven't learned English, so I had to teach them to transfer to get uh, bus 18 at Seminole Mall to go down to where their aunt works down at the VA. Um, so talking about it and um, and, and, and the driver really was key because he said out of nowhere, oh, by the way, do you happen to speak Spanish? Do I look like I do? No, but actually I do. So it worked out. So the driver was really pivotal. Well, but what I hear you saying also is, is, is that may be a variation under a, a, an item of, of increasing ridership is by making it e you know, for easier for people to learn to ride or yeah. and also how do we deal with individuals with who don't speak English or so? You know, the drivers going to be asking everybody, what languages do you speak? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think yeah. Um, any other ideas? Come on. I welcome your thoughts. 
do you all agree that those are interesting initiatives? Are they relevant mm -hmm. initiatives or not? I, because I, I don't want to be pushing this. I want to hear what what you all would like. Do you want to have no initiatives? I mean, yes. So sure. you're so. You, so you're saying that uh, you, you want to focus on increasing ridership and then the image of riders? Yes, those are I the see, two. As I, I, those, are, those are two that I, I very much like as well. But, but, um, but this isn't my glorious committee. This is our committee. So. I, I like the idea of kind of um, helping out with uh, the like internal fixes that we have here. Okay. I mean, I feel like there's these are these are some things that we have should have experience with as, as transit riders. I don't know. Um, I don't know how much we can work on some of this other stuff that I see. I mean, like, is having any experience with that? But, like, I, this one isn't on here. But, and I don't want to talk about it too much. But I, you know, like the uh, um, rider updates. You know, I had an, uh, another issue with uh, a route being, um, you know, uh, being transferred and missing the bus for customers were standing there, mm -hmm. and and um, so like something like that. I feel like. There should be a better system for that, um, like letting letting riders know when routes are changing. I mean, the, the last one I talked about was just a one-day thing. I don't think there's anything we can do about that. But this one, PSP knew about it when I called, and it's just like maybe uh, we could work on that, trying to figure out a way uh, of getting riders, um, you know, updates sent out a little bit better than having to check on the website or, you know, reading the onboard notices. Like, one of the things in here says, you know, no one reads onboard notices. So if that's where service changes are or a route, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't do much. The only person I know that reads those is my daughter. She's always <laughs> reading all those things. But um, Well, there's a big sandwich board out at the um, terminal out here. It has all the different, because there's quite a few that have all changed up this last month and uh, you can't ha help but notice it right there but I didn't know about it until I actually got already was here and saw that well I got on the bus in Indian Rocks and it comes every 15 minutes instead of every half hour now and then on the bus I really didn't notice anything but I saw that big sandwich board because it's really you, know, you see it a lot more so Not the little either. things on the Ooh. bus like the thing for New Year's Eve, I didn't see that until New Year's Eve day that the routes were going later through the evening and it was free from after 8 o'clock. Things question. don't seem to get spread out, you know, it doesn't get to... Based on what Richard's saying, maybe, or maybe oh, we only have one external initiative or maybe no external initiative. Maybe you all want to have the initiative be about internal issues, have a committee that talks about the key internal issues that we want to focus on working with PSTA on. If that's if that's what where we want to be, then that that may be what we do. Um, and again, I, I welcome your all your input. What what do you think? I agree that we need to focus, but I think we need to focus more in not that regionalism and all the other ideas and interacting with you know county government and local government isn't a bad idea but um, I think a lot of us are on this committee because or on this board because we want to see PSTA be better and we want our opinions and our voices as riders to make PSTA a better organization that can better serve not only us but every rider within the county mm -hmm. so I what I'm here if we if we have as an initiative would you like to see it be a group that is internal issues, or should we break this out into a number of different one-by-one one issues? I, I kind of like the idea of having a group talk about these are the 10 items we want to have PSTA fix and have you all decide which are our priorities, but. I like that idea. That one of the, the, the groups is the internal group. issues group, and they, they, they come to the committee with this is the list of internal issues that we've right. looked at, and these are these are what we we as riders feel that are A's, and these are B's, and and so forth. Does that does that how, what does PSTA think about that? I mean, what, what how does that sound? Does that sound crazy to you? So or? what you just uh, were suggesting was a the the full track would um, 
prioritize this list of eight, and maybe there's a few others or more. Or more. Um, and then I don't know. We we could uh, we staff could present what PSDA currently does mm -hmm. regarding these eight eight or ten things, and right. then we would love to have your input on ways we could do it better. Um, you know. That would, that, would, that would serve the writer better because I mean most of these things are related to communicating or or helping the writer um, right. so if they're not working or if you can think of a brilliant idea that's mm -hmm. why you're here um, is to uh, yeah exactly okay. um, as Mark said I mean to try to make it better so we could do that we could put these on the agendas for I don't know tackle two per month or whatever you want to do cool. I, I would like to make sure that we're we're respectful of people's time mm -hmm. so um, not just today but as we sort of develop this agenda so you all just decide whether you want to have a, a subset of you get together and and look at these issues maybe a half hour before the meeting or if you want to make this part of the regular meeting um, there may be time to time when we have to forego something that's coming to the board in order to have this discussion. And we've left some decisions off of your agenda that are going to the board um, so that you could have this discussion here. And so I just want to make sure that if you, if you want to have it with the entire group that we always provide enough time to, to discuss something and then if we have to feel like you don't, if you don't feel like you have enough time to discuss it, is that we allow ourselves the opportunity to talk about it again at the next meeting or finish the conversation at the next mm -hmm. meeting. So, just something to consider about the amount of time that this committee meets versus all of the things that he could be bringing to you, because there's a lot, there's a lot of right. stuff oh, that yeah, he could yeah. be bringing to you. And what we have done in the past is. Um, maybe if you wanted to prioritize these is we put them into the agendas um, when we can and we can work with Gloria about you know here's what's going to the board what of these should go to the should come to the track and and do we have time to talk about one of these other issues in, in this meeting so and you can this group can set your priorities however you want if you want to say well we absolutely want one of these internal fixed discussions at every meeting and then make sure that the rest of the time is spent on um, recommendations to the board or vice versa. Um, I guess the first question I have based on what Cassandra's saying, and I agree, I, I, we can't take huge amounts of time on a lot of this in total. What we did last year with the initiatives is we had two separate subcommittees that were a small group of, of the members of the track decided on something. I think what one of our options is for the internal issues is to have a subcommittee come to the full committee and say these based on the lists we had of 15 items these are the five that we think we want to make sure we focus on this year and we feel these are a b and c priorities that's one option the other option is for us as a committee to choose five items or three items to, to cover during the year um, I guess my, my question is if, if we can do it this way is I'd like to see how many would prefer to have it be a subcommittee versus the full committee and if you want a subcommittee are you going to be on the subcommittee mm -hmm. so how many feel that we should do this via a subcommittee um, versus having us decide as the full committee and if you are if you want the subcommittee uh, will you be will you all be on the subcommittee yes okay um, does everyone else agree that that's that 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 or would you the rest of you would prefer to have it be a full a full committee you want the full committee okay so we had like five people that were saying that they wanted a subcommittee and the balance were saying they wanted the full committee so I do you want or do you want to do the vote more officially raise your hand if you want the subcommittee okay. all right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. okay so that's that is actually a majority is nine say the subcommittee um, and so uh, that one we will need to have those, those of you who want to be want to have a subcommittee. I need to get your names to be on the subcommittee. And we will set that meeting up. 
Um, the other question I have is, do we want a second initiative besides in the, the internal uh, fixes? You know, as, as, as we talked about the image of riders or increasing ridership for PSTA as a subcommittee with ideas that might go beyond this. How many of you would like to have a second initiative that's, a, that's an external initiative? Uh, all in favor of having a second initiative? So the majority of you, that's the, you don't want a second initiative. You want to just do the internal issues this year. I thought it was the, the internal plus the um, safety, safety awards. Safety awards. Yeah. And okay, plus the safety awards then being the second one? Okay. Yeah. All right, well then that's what we'll do this year. That's decided. Very good. Okay. Um, and so I think at this point, uh, that's the end of that discussion. So I guess maybe at this point, I'd like to go around the room and see if anyone has any member comments uh, at the end of the meeting to, that for us to think about or comments, complaints. Gloria? Yes, sir. Yes. Address the absolutely, group. Bill Johnson. I just wanted to formally and personally thank all of you for being on the track committee. I've been uh, on the PSTA board for just about eight years, and I have one more month, and I will be term limited in Clearwater, which means I'm term limited on this board, but. It's been very helpful to me to have multiple eyes on the street. And so um, I think this board is very important. I'm, I'm glad you, you folks are so energized. So thank you. And uh, keep up the work. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was, and I, I think I said this at the last meeting, but what with Bill uh, you know, articulated was that, you know, a number of the members of our board don't ride, don't regularly ride, and they don't ride on transit because of the difficulties we all experience with schedule frequencies and where it goes and so on. And so they do, they count on us, and, and they count on our voices, which is very good. Other comments? Yes, Elizabeth. The sandwich board idea, we've, we've had lots of email, I mean, um, Facebook posts, and Let's see some sandwich boards on the Facebook posts. I don't think we've seen them. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen like like she found them at the terminal. I, I stopped and I studied it down at Tyrone <coughs> Mall. And um, so that's an internal fix. No yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, on <coughs> Facebook. Okay. Then that because you can forward them. Mm. I have a question. I can't remember the name of that, um, uh, the, the Uber to what had the zones and uh, what was Direct the Connect. Direct Connect. Direct Connect. How, um, how's, that, how's that going? And um, I, I wonder if anybody from track has used that yet. I did when it first started. Yeah? And how was it? It was great. I yeah. love getting a day pass for it. Uh, that's no longer, I guess you get a one ride now. But I found it really convenient because I live where I live. Only the four and the seventy-four are within walking distance. So getting to Parkside or shops at Park Place was, you know, it for me to make a connection, and it worked really well. Do we have numbers for that? I mean, because like, that's, that's what I was looking for. I mean, would it be too um, hard to? And we can share that with you. Uh, there's, we do provide that to the board a monthly too. Um, I would say that ridership on the first mile, last mile direct connect program has been growing and is good. Um, we think that we have learned a lot from it and uh, it needs some, uh, we think we can make some improvements with it. We've been working as best we, we've been working with Uber uh, and we're gonna be rolling out some, what we think are going to be improvements, like we're gonna get rid of the zone so that you can take an Uber Good. and we're, and we're yeah, dramatically increasing limited. the number of uh, uh, bus stops that you uh, can take a discounted Uber ride to and from in the county. And uh, those two things, we're targeting April 2nd 
uh, hopefully Uber will come around on that. Um, we're making a few changes within the program. Right now, one of the issues is it's very convenient within Uber to slide the slider over to PSTA. Mm -hmm. right. Well, apparently thousands of people are sliding the sliding over to PSTA and they're never riding the bus. Right. Um, so um, starting April 2nd, there'll be a new system that will ask you to enter a promo code, um, which is going to be something very easy to understand, not that I can remember it, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's like PSTA to Uber, or maybe it's Uber to PSTA, I can't remember, um, something like that. It'll be, it'll be um, highly advertised by us. This way, it's type into Uber to get your discount, and then you can get the discount. It'll be, I think, ultimately easier for our riders to use it. And uh, we should see even more increases. Um, one of the biggest challenges about saying much about the program is Uber has been very challenged, or bit, it's been very frustrating the limited amount of data that Uber is willing to provide. Um, they're still very, very fearful of giving us too much information that might help their competitors or something crazy. So. Um, um, we have ridership on it, and we have a some ridership by the different zones. Like I know that the Pinellas Park shops is our number one uh, usage, and number two is the Tarpon Springs one. Um, some of them are like hardly used at all. Uh, bottom of the list, those two are really pretty well used. I can comment. Yesterday I was at Sand Key and try and leaving. I came in. I came in East Bay, which is what the smart locals do, right? And then I left through Clearwater, and the inbound was absolutely a parking lot. And all I could think was, oh, those poor tourists, oh, those poor people who didn't plan ahead. Absolute two-lane parking lot all the way into the city. Uh, and uh, I'm worried or concerned about even giving folks a free ride. They're still going to have to be parked in that bridge. I can't wait until the thought of whether it's three years or five years, getting that extra lane, a bus lane, to, to cut past that traffic. I mean, in the end, even a free trolley, you know, water taxi, great, but that free trolley is still gonna be stuck sitting in, the, sitting in that parking lot. I have a really weird question. I don't know who to even ask it of or what if there's anyone in the county who would know it. I'm seeing all kinds of apartments being built. And I presume apartments are for young people with low income, are those folks gonna take buses I, I see them on 34th Street and up by me and then all over. We, I see the two kinds of constructions, which are new McMansions and huge high-density apartments that are just full of parking lots for all those cars. And do we have any kind of demographic information about where those jobs are? Where are these people working if they're going to fill these apartments? Are they young people with both of them are working at McDonald's or? Rents are through the roof. Or are they are they doing? I, I thought we were. I thought the city was closing all of the call centers. I, I'm just curious. Does I, do we have that data? Does someone at Forward Pinellas have it? Does someone at the county have it? Does someone in the state have it? Does anyone even know? I mean. Obviously, the builders know. They're building those apartments. Some and some are luxury apartments. Oh, okay. Then are they just maybe all snowbirds that can afford to come down and buy it for half a year? But are those folks going to ride buses? That's what I was wondering. Right. Well, the high level data, uh, it's a Ford Pinellas kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I'll ask, I'll ask there tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Yeah. And again, I'll ask all of you guys to come the day after tomorrow, every fourth Thursday instead of fourth Thursday. Thanks, guys. Um, I ride the bus 11 to school and everything. And this one bus stop right here, we cannot be seen by any of the buses. Unless you actually step yeah. out. Yeah. And this is like way it's it's too raining. far back. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't want to be out. Right. Where's the stop? Show James the stop. Yeah. If it's raining, you're in the stop. It's on 5th Avenue South and 37th Street. Right by P-Tech. Okay. What, what was the issue you said? I it's know. too far back um, where you cannot even see the buses coming okay. when you're in the bus stop. Okay. We'll it's check. too we'll far check it out. Yeah, behind. We'll, thank you for <coughs> that.
is, is this our copy or is this something? Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have the original pictures in my okay, phone, so but yeah, you can have do. it, yeah. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Again, I, if, if anyone is interested in being on the initiative committee on, you know, I, identifying the priorities for, for the PSTA fixes, the internal fixes, um, let Marianne know, and um, and we will set up when that, that subcommittee meeting will, will be held. Uh, and our next track meeting will help be held on March 13th, at 4 o'clock. And uh, if no one else has any other comments, then uh, the meeting is adjourned.